talking about public services and infrastructure, etc., the CDD, you know, the Center for Democratic, yeah. Democratic Development, they again conducted a survey, they, another uh, barometer, and they said, uh, according to the survey, uh, the people they spoke to and the respondent Ghanaians, 2,400 of them as a sample size, um, a certain percentage said uh, government was pe performing badly in providing public services. Uh, 61 and 63 percent said government performed very badly in education and public health care services respectively. And following that, uh, we've had some responses from, from government communicators, yeah, etc. Of course, government co communicators will definitely go and support. They would defend uh, what they are doing. But it, it, that. Is, that, it, is that a reflection of the true state of the provision of public services? Because a number of schools, according to what government has said, have been built. A number of schools have been taken off, street, off, the, off trees. And now they have very good structures for, for pupils or students to study in. Yeah. A number of health facilities have been constructed, again, we're told by government. A number of roads are also being constructed. So what's the argument? Well, every government, when it is in power, cannot be said that it did not do anything. Every government will do something. We'll build up on what the, the last government left off. And when we are doing this assessment, I, I, think, I guess that maybe they have their own parameters. And they went out to interview the people based on those parameters. And the people have come out to say that. 61% are saying that, well, the uh, government is not doing well in education and uh, health. Education, health services. They actually they mentioned a number of, a number of them, well. and they are rebutting it. So I don't see their problem. They, as an independent body, went out to interview people based on those parameters, and those are the ideas. I don't think they went selecting uh, MPP or NDC people to talk to, no. I'm sure they just walked on the street and then selected their own sample size and did an interview. And this is the outcome of the research they did. And so if government will sit there and not take a cue from what they are doing and probably change its strategies towards the provision of these services, then it's up to the government. I want to believe in this uh, uh, survey done because as an MP, mm -hmm. I've been called upon by the education service in my constituency to go and buy chalk for them. And I did that. I bought chalk. I bought... For how many bought? schools? A couple well, of I gave it to the director of education. How, how, how many? How many? I don't know how many schools. They how were many ready. containers did you import or buy? No, I I don't import. Of course, at, the, at that time I didn't have much money in my in my uh, common fund. At that time. So at that time. Mm. So at least but I now, could buy. Uh, I could buy. I could, now a lot they of money. Brought, they came with an invoice. Now a lot of money has. No, no, no. I mean, it's finished. I mean, I mean, we have not had any common fund the whole of this year. The whole of this year, no common fund has been paid to any MP. Statutory so, lands, you supposed yes. to have common fund coming through. Statutory, yes, you have to. And then someone. The president has even been taken to court, and the court has. And so you say, as a result of all those um, inquisitions that were made, a request. Yes. Government so, is not performing well. Yes, just well, by that very well, case. Then. Capitation grant has not been paid for close to two years. So why would somebody say government is doing well in the educational sector? Capitation grant is, and then other grants are this uh, uh, little amount of money that the schools are supposed to have to go and buy registered, go and buy teachers' notebook, go and buy chalk, and all those things. And if it has not been paid over using and it will have to the assembly, this assembly cannot even pay for it. And then they will write to MP. It is the district assembly at the the education uh, uh, directorate wrote to the district assembly and the district assembly also wrote a letter attached to it and gave it to me as an MP. When they saw that at that time my second uh, quarter common fund for last year mm. had been paid, they realized that you know they control it. They know the amount in there. So they saw that oh I have some small amount there. And quickly they wrote to me that I should go and buy chalk for for the district. Uh, Right of education. And I did that. Chalk. I did that. Because they were not having chalk to write on the board. And I was serious. Teachers were using their own teachers were using their own pocket money whenever they are going to school. They go and buy about three, four pieces and go. And that was so bad. They came complaining, so I had to go and buy it. So why would somebody say that yes, of course, government is doing well in uh, provision of educational services? No. No. But it's not true. People are not being paid when it comes to uh, the health services. Yesterday or so I heard I'm, I'm sure you heard about a demonstration in Northern Italy. We experienced it. We are going out I mean, for us, a number of people. They have not been paid the allowance for two years. Some could not register their final exams because they depend solely on the allowance. And it's a bond between you and the student. Help. You know, yes, help. Help nurses, students. Yeah, help students. Some, they are supposed to register for their final exams. They have not been able to register. They and and is that fault of government? 
Because, because their allocations are not coming yes. for them to be paid. Yes. We have a program. Because I have an arrangement with you. I know when I qualify to go But you to do school. agree as a member of parliament that uh, the country is facing a number of challenges. You know, statutory payment, you see, I have, I'm not at the Ministry of Finance. I don't know. I don't understand how it works. That is why when someone went to court, the person won. Statutory simply means that it is compulsory. It is worked on a percentage basis. Whatever amount that you take, you are not saying go and give them 100 million at the end of everyone. No. It is worked in percentages. Didn't you take money? Why not tax? You paid your taxes, isn't it? I paid my everybody here. has paid his or her taxes. You put everything in a consolidated fund. They say, take this percentage for this, that, and that. And then you don't pay. You think I can do this in any, any developed world? You've been paid. But here in our uh, uh, laws, when the president Are you saying that government is flouting statutory Seriously. rules? Seriously. Constitutional rules. That's serious. Yeah, that's serious. But what would be the implication? Somebody said you're just accusing government because uh, you No, it is not because. No, 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 no. no I, don't, I don't get that. And when you go and I will tell you that salaries are high and therefore they have to first pay salary. Oh, you mean that's the a, wages that, yes, for public sector yes. workers? That's the reason they have been given. I really don't understand it. Where is the money? We do a budget and you say this amount of money is supposed to come to parliament. To me, to me, this year, if everybody will agree, like we book out this budget. We book out it. Why should you say that? Then we won't have a budget. Arm, yes. Why should you be a second arm of government? We go, you approve a budget for the executive. You have the chance because the money comes to you. You spend. What aren't is you, Aren't you inciting people against government? No, I'm only sharing my view. Now, I don't see why we should go and approve another budget for government. Because government is constantly, constantly doing something contrary to the constitution. And that is why civil service organizations are coming up now. I hope we read about Imani and Co. giving the Auditor General a number of days to go chase all the monies that it has reported on. They gave me a certain number of days. I read that yesterday also. That they are giving me 60 days. You should go and collect all the monies or they take it into court. That is uh, Auditor General and the uh, Attorney General. And that is right. Those are constitutional. They are on the constitution. Why should you come and do an audit and say that ABC people have uh, uh, misused certain monies? They have spent certain monies that are not approved and therefore they should pay back and just end it there. No. The constitution goes ahead to say that. Go ahead with the Auditor General and Attorney General. We didn't say this, collect those monies. And for over 11 years or so, people have just misused these monies and they are working about free. And you're not making any effort to collect them. So they are saying that if you don't, of course, then they took you to court. Why should you collect money? And the Constitution said that at the end of collection of every money, this percentage should go to this place, go to this place, go to, and you are not sending it there. And we are all sitting now. Is it not unconstitutional? And before you become a president, you hold the Bible or the Quran and swear you are going to act in accordance with the constitution. So you have breached the constitution. So left to me alone, Parliament will also breach the constitution by saying that, or we put you on the toes by saying that we will not approve any more budget for you because you are not doing what is right. We approved 2014 budget for you. You have not paid us anything as parliamentarians. And we sit there, you want us to go and approve 2015 for you. We will pay for 2015 when we approve. No. Left to me alone. We will buckle this. This budget, I will not do any approval. That's inciting. I keep telling you that. Is that not inciting? I don't think so. I'm okay. sure in my mind. But, uh, the, the Deputy Minister for Local Government and Rural Development appeared before Parliament, um, was it a day or two ago? Yeah, I was in the Parliament. I was in Parliament. Yes, and so said yeah. government owes key trust of the school feeding program yes. 101 yes. million Ghana cities. Yes. That is serious. But that will be paid. When? Small, small. You see, if I tell you the number of people who are running away from their homes, this I have I've always been saying this on radio everywhere I go. I have one particular sister who is a Muslim and then also one of them. And so she had a kitra. So she had the opportunity of becoming a Muslim. The amount of money that I paid on her behalf, you don't believe it. Because suppliers will come on her and she come on me. And she's, and in, so she's, she's in your constituency or your neighborhood? Yes, my constituency. Think of three schools or so. There's nothing wrong with it. If you pay, the, what? when she's paid, you'll be paid. No. You see, if I don't pay, she's going to prison. Or she's going to be jailed. And because we have that blood relation, and now that you know that you are an MP, you cannot say no. And that's the only work she has doing now. And so government reneging on these payments are affecting livelihoods, you are saying? Everywhere, I'm telling you. Someone will Everywhere. say that you're doing politics with this. No, no, no. You see, the thing is, we plan for this. 
monies are being collected. The monies are supposed to be shared equally in accordance with the constitution. But how can you allow this young ladies who have come out? You see, when they give them the contract, they don't capitalize them. They don't give them any initial no mobilization. No mobilization, nothing. They go borrow money and start the business themselves. And then for three times, you don't pay them. How do you expect them to continue to be in business? They have dependents. They have workers. I remember a situation where, you know, in order, the district assembly is very close to the, the court, the two, the magistrate court and then the high court. Sometimes you be at the assembly, you hear, when they see you drive into the assembly, they see that, oh, MP has come. Then they come rushing, holding your legs. Why? My savior. This. Nothing wrong with that. You are popular. It just shows that you're popular. They sit in the see, it is affecting some of us. And sometimes I sit and say, anyway, that is my heart. That's my calling. Mm. To me, I, I feel strongly that you have to I'll serve. Go, yes, I people. have to serve people. I'm going to serve. So if I have it, I do it. Sometimes I go to the court and stand there and say, please, can you give me two weeks or one month? And then the people will accept it. So now, once you go and give the guarantee, it is you they call. Mm. The court will accept that. Then you have to go and bail them out. And this is happening so much that you wonder those who are not bold to take others to court. So it means that it is only those who are bold to take <clears throat> their creditors to court that I see. I'm sure there are several other people who are saying, that, well, if you pay, I'll give it to God. Mm. And it's affecting lives to me. As a member of the opposition party, and you make all these utterances, you're just m making government look bad so that alternatively, you create a public opinion that your party is the alternative. Uh, yeah. I I'm sure the first time I came here, you gave me a name. You said, it looks like you have met several people, but it looks like I'm a, a Christian politician or so. You said that. That is how. You mean I said it off air or on air? No, no, on air. You said it on air. My first time I met you here. I, I analyzed certain things. I know I, 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 I tell you that, but I know it's usually off air. I said that on air. <laughs> yeah, you said that on air. Mm. You said that on air. And when you come to that, I tell you, to me, there is no. So, so you're saying what you're doing is not political? No. It's, I want you're the just government. being real. Yes, I'm being real. Government should be up and doing. Now that the budget will be paying certain Now things. that the budget will be read next. Um, how do we make sure we don't have overruns? Because uh, according to what the Bank of Ghana is telling, already we've overrun. <laughs> so, so how it's do you make sure? No, we cannot. We, we, uh, it's, how can we make it's sure? It's by 6.1%. 6 yes, so how do we make sure we don't have overruns? <laughs> I don't think I have the solution. It is with them. They are managing the economy. You see, if I will suggest anything at all, I will say that we should be prudent. Okay? We should be meticulous in our finances. If you know, I, I work with USAID for seven years. When they do a budget, and this amount of money is for this item and this item, you can never run but that's from one USA. item. USAID is not a country. USAID is not dogged no, by it is, strikes. It is simply it's, not, it's not dogged by strikes, uh, unattended strikes, and budgeted <laughs> strikes, and things like that. And government will have to do all out. USAID, they are not dogged by uh, 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 severe economic challenges, and they are not dogged by. Um, Look, severe managing. unforeseen energy crisis. I understand you. Mm -hmm. I understand you. So, so I don't know whether. No, but you see, severe you... unforeseen. We have the contingency budget budget lines. Well, that's why you come for supplementary and things yes. like that. Yes. So those ones can be handled by that. So be meticulous in the management of the budget. We say budget item. This is for this. Stay there. Make sure it works. It is economic. It it, it is economic discipline. The whole word, the whole thing should be disciplined. That's what I see. So that you don't just get up and spend anyhow. Say, these people want this, and so we should plan and make sure we stay within the plan and make sure we spend according to the plan. That's all. Else we continue to have overruns. Now, how would some people just sit down and plan that, hey, these people, I think that this thing, government should have paid this. Let's go. We can get some judgment data from that. And I just go and be. Following people and that's just plain talk. That's not how it goes. You go through due process, yes, yes. and they go to the courts, and the and, cases and are not contested in, in many respects. We're told that's not the fault of government. No, did you are, you are you listening? Did you listen to this judgment date issue? The commissioner, of the judgment. commissioner. Mm. In most of the cases, will be awarded. People's negligence. That's what he says. Yes, that's in what his he says. estimation. In his estimation, mm. most of the judgment that could have been awarded. Mm. Most of them. That's, it, that, that's his um, estimation. That's, yes. not, that's not what happened. The reality was that 
I mean, they went to court and they, they were not No, so before it goes to court, mm. before it goes to court, someone sitting somewhere, you think that I'm the boss. I'm a government uh, representative. I'm the boss. But do you agree that some of the cases that appeared before the Judgment Day Commission cut across governments? Yo, uh, yes. the MPP government yes. as well yes. as the MPC government. I'm not, I'm not blaming this government alone. Mm. I'm saying that there are several costs that could be avoided. Mm. Several of them. And you see, we should take those who are in charge, those in responsible positions, mm. we should make sure that they are responsible. Mm. We should make sure that they are. It's in most government organizations, MLE, who does that? Unlike the, the private sector, where, I mean, the evaluation is there. It's put on, a, on the computer. In every quarter, you are evaluated. You know the parameters. And so when you are feeling yourself, you know it. As part of your KPI, yeah, yes. things like that. When you are feeling yourself, you know it. And nobody will tell you to back up. First quarter, you are below 50%. Second quarter, you are below 50%. At the end of the year, no, you are going home. My experience with you, I said. Do you have these things in, in the public sector? In the public who, sector. In the public or civil service. Who evaluates you? It's a mere form sometimes. When I went to Google, but I saw that. Every year you be evaluated. And that one even depends on who is evaluating you. That is only merely to tell whether you, you are due for promotion or not, but not for punishment. So ne that, it is never so you now, are never evaluated for punishment. Now that we're going to have the budget presented to Parliament, mm -hmm. and I'm sure the entire country, because it will be broadcast live. W what are the key things you want to see in the budget? Mm -hmm. Or to you, it doesn't matter. Oh, well, it, it matters. Okay, it matters seriously. It matters. Once seriously. you're not going to boycott it, what do you want to see in the budget? I want to see serious measures that will will check corruption. You see, the drain in our finances alone could form a huge amount of loan that we could take. I mean, could, we could stop a number of loan that we take from the uh, other various uh, financial markets. I want to see some kind of effort in the budget to stop leakages and corruption. That is the foremost thing that is on my heart. Don't you have data? If it's data that we need to collect. Don't you know the number of students who leave the polytechnics, the universities and all that? Such that when they leave and they say national service, we have a data of the number of national service persons that we have. And they come out with blue figures. It's a common, simple reason. Budget. What do you want to see in the budget? You're talking about national service. Budget. So, something to stop corruption. Okay? And then government expenditure seriously cut down. And we should invest in areas that will let the economy move forward. Particularly, education is already receiving uh, that uh, kind of budget, but it's not enough. Agriculture, to needs me, to. Needs, to. needs to. These two, agriculture and education. You see, if, if we have about 75% of the Ghanaian population educated, and you see that, hey, don't throw this thing away, and the person will not throw it away, it will not go and choke, it will not go and choke that gutter to bring cholera, and therefore, the health sector will be okay. So, Agriculture to be self sufficient in terms of food so we can export some. We should be educated so that we know what is right for you and I so that we do that. And when we are able to do these two years, then of course, health will also be catered for. We should be prudent in our management. We should take Ghana as our property yeah. and manage it well. Most of a politician, I said that. <laughs> All right. <laughs> so we have had in the studio for AM Talk, <laughs> William um, Ijapong Kwetu, and thanks for joining me. Thank um, you, too. Mr. Kwetu. Thank you for having uh, me. He's a member of parliament for Akimoda. He's also a member of the MPP. Okay, has been doing some traveling the last couple of days, so hasn't been keeping tap with what's been happening um, in the house. He has a new chair, though. Uh, they've raised concerns about the chairs in parliament. But <laughs> that's not for discussion. We're taking a break. When we come back, we'll have a lot more for you to stay on.